That's what it is. Let's dive into this one. Hi, everybody. It's the Gringo Scott. Today we will be reviewing the 1988 movie Die Hard. And I want to say this one is a classic. I'm sorry, it's totally a classic. This is day 12 of my 30 day video a day challenge. If you want to see those other videos at the end of this video, I'll put it on the playlist for you to click and watch those lists if you like it. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out this Christmas movie, Die Hard, 1988. We have John McClane, who's a New York City police officer, and it's 1988 Christmas, apparently. And he's going to go visit his wife. Him and his wife and kids, they're estranged. He's still in New York, I guess. Kind of estranged. So he's in New York, I think. And then they're in the new corporate job. But there seems to be some real stress and resentment going on about what's going on. Why he didn't go. She went and made a career decision. Maybe he wasn't really for that. Whatever the case. I believe his, his wife and his kids are in California. And he is in New York City as a cop still going to close up shop and get ready to move at some point but he's going to visit him for Christmas but kind of get the impression maybe he's not going to close up shop we just don't know he gets to California or wherever that is to visit them she's doing a wonderful corporate job I mean she is it's this Japanese company corporation and she's doing really well I mean it is a super nice building I can't imagine wow and he goes to the Christmas party, and during the Christmas party, some European terrorist, led by Professor Snape from the House of Slytherin, he comes with his group of European terrorists, and they take over the building while he and his wife are in there. That's the basic general summary of this one. When you're outnumbered, sometimes it's best to disengage and reevaluate the situation and re-engage afterwards. So it's kind of a... And that's with John McCain and his situation where it's life and death. But in normal life as well, there's a thing called pause when agitated or doubtful. And that is often been helpful for me. If I'm feeling too emotional, like if I'm feeling impulsive and I feel like I have to do it now, that's a way that's my that's an indicator for me that I don't have to do it now and I'm just being impulsive and to stop, relax, calm down, take five minutes walk away from the situation, think about it, and then come back and approach it. The bad. Thinks that the thing about this movie is it, I think, was probably a canon for this genre of movie. And afterwards, there were a bunch of other movies that tried to imitate them, including itself. And also, I've seen Bruce Willis in this role so many times now that that's all Bruce Willis does. So it's lost some of its sparkle. At the time it was amazing, but now it doesn't seem as great. So there's a, there's a little bit of a fall, like, nah, it's not as good because I've seen it so many times and I've seen repeats of this. It was a canon of this type of movie. Very clever at the time. The last thing that they had to do, I don't know, I guess it's to drive the plot or something, or like, oh, I'm gonna get, everyone's against me. The super incompetent police. So the LAPD are coming and they're, you know, or he's trying, McLean's trying to contact the LAPD and they're so dumb. Every step, step of the way, the cops are super incompetent. Who's ever in charge is super incompetent and cocky. It's, it's so irritating. Like, you're so dumb. Why, why? Oh, it's so ridiculous. So that's a little irritating. Frustrating when you it's like you, it's like, what, it's, people don't act like that. It's just like a high extreme version of what, how people act, I'd like to think. I mean, maybe one leader, but like every time it was someone that was incompetent. It just blew the mind. The good. One thing I really like about this movie, they set the rules of what a good cop does morally. And John McClane really tried to remain being a good cop. He was playing by the rules against terrorists who don't play by the rules. And I like the way they kept his character with that, with that theme of that. Another thing I thought was cool, they had some cool foreshadowing with uh, an event that was going to be occurring. Um, and he was like, oh, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Would you be a little bit baby over a little bit of glass? And they kind of, that's kind of a foreshadowing for later things that occur. Um, so it was really plot. It was planned out throughout the whole movie, the situation with that in the glass. And that was, I thought that was pretty clever. 
overall the movie is really good i really enjoyed it still i was surprised i still enjoyed it um it has been a little bit played out so it wasn't as good as it could have been but i'm gonna have to say if you haven't seen this movie and you're into Christmas movies and you don't like the traditional Christmas movies, this is a great Christmas movie. It does have the Christmas feel, believe it or not, so it's definitely something you should check out. So before I give my overall opinion of this movie, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. But I give Die Hard, the 1988 movie, a 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Peace! Yeah, boy.